G'day YouTube, uh, this is uh, Sean here and we're just working on the boat again. Today we'll be uh, doing a little bit of welding, or pad welding, uh, building up some of that uh, corroded area. Um, it's going to be a little bit tricky with setting up the camera and uh, unfortunately uh, Reedy isn't here so we'll just get on with it. Alright, so with TIG welding, uh, use argon um, opposed to with steel welding you would use like an argon shield which is a mixture of argon for uh, TIG welding aluminium you use a, a pure argon um, this is a pure argon this is uh, provided by uh, core gas which we just get from bunnies so it's there's no there's no rental on the bottle so what I'm doing is just fitting fitting the gauge I'll just fit the gauge up for the TIG welder the argon um, goes around the weld, it's called a shield gas, so it stops air getting to the weld while you're welding. While the aluminium is a molten state when you're welding, the shield gas stops the oxygen from getting to the actual weld. So a couple of things when you're TIG welding on a boat, um, to disconnect all the, uh, the batteries. Um, usually if you just dis disconnect the negative sides of all the batteries it should be alright. So you don't want any spikes in current from the welder going through the, the battery system, the power system or you know into the electronic equipment. So so here we've got the, the TIG welding head which I've just pulled apart while I was just talking. This is the probably the most uh, important piece. This is called uh, uh, the tungsten or this is where the actual the weld comes off the tip of this. To the material um, this has got to be super clean I've just got to grind that that tip down because it's uh, it's a little bit dirty before we start the tip of the tungsten that, that goes in the the tick welder so that uh, the scratches point straight out from the end of the tip rather than going around the tip hey that's how I start off with my tip right now what will happen as soon as I start to weld is uh, the, the point of that tip or the end of that tip um, will ball up. So the, the, end, the very end of it will melt a little bit so it'll become sort of more round. But we want it to do that. Um, and then um, it's only if it gets dirty again or if I accidentally dip it into the weld pool um, where it gets dirty and aluminium gets on the actual tungsten um, that you've got to pull out the tungsten and clean it again. Okay guys, well before we get into it, um, we're cleaning up the area. The aluminium that we're welding is uh, 5083, uh, it's marine grade aluminium. So we're giving it a clean up with a stainless steel wire brush. Um, we've got a, a, a little die grinder that we use to clean it up with a tungsten carbide tip. Um, and the filler rods we're using are 2 mil 5356, which is compatible with the, the 5083. And the TIG's ready to go. I've set up the camera behind another mask. Um, and we're going to basically fill in this area here. Hopefully you can see that area there. And I can do this and you'll be able to see. Hopefully. What we're looking to do first is get the arc going, um, get a weld pull happening, so once there's a pull we'll be able to start adding material. So you can see that little area there, the low bit was. You can see over here where somebody's done a bit of pad welding before to build up another little bit of damage. Oh, bits of corrosion there. There's a couple of other spots we'll, uh, we'll uh, be working on as well. Um, I'll do this piece a bit down here. All right, as you can see, I've gone over it a second time and just filled up those low spots. Uh, just noticed a, another little low spot in here and we'll fill that in as well. Alright, so we've, we've done up here, done along there, filled in the rest of that, filled in over this one. 
those ones have been filled in previously filled in a little low spot there I think this uh, the rest of the section just really just needs a bit of a, a clean up uh, with the Dremel I'll, I'll if I find a, a spot like this little pit there I get in and I take out any of the corrosion and then I'll basically come along with the TIG there's the TIG head there um, and I will start that side I'll build up a weld pool so once it starts to pull then I'll add material and come forward over the top of it just fill it all in so it sort of ends up pretty flat like that and if I'm really um, being anal about it I can I'll go over it with the, the sander and just flatten it all off. Um, the only reason, I, I mean, looking at the other repairs, they haven't bothered. I can see this one was done a long time ago up there. They haven't bothered to grind them off at all, flatten them off. But um, I think, uh, you know, the, the surface of the um, aluminium will just drain a lot better if it's all nice and flat. I'm still considering whether I should seal it up with maybe an epoxy coat or something like that but um, I think the idea is that um, because aluminium the oxidization layer actually protects it from any further corrosion once you start putting um, epoxy over the top of it it stops the air getting in but it's the air that stops it from corroding so it's sort of like a double-edged sword I think the main problem is just getting all that the residue of that foam out, giving it a good clean out, giving it a good rinse. You know, the only concern that we have is, you know, pitting in the, the actual hull plate. Um, because if that gets, you know, worse, I mean, it's only two mil or so deep in some places. But, uh, you know, as it, because there's already a pit there, then, you know, more moisture will sit in that and it'll corrode more and, uh, you know, eventually it'll go through the hull, but you've got six mil plate boat, so you can see how how thick that is. And you think about it, we've only we've only gone sort of that much into the plate. So if they were deep pits, you know, going down, you know, four mil or something like that, like we can see what I'm doing with my thumb across that. If you only had a couple of mil of the plate left, and you definitely want to um, get to that in time. But you know, it's a six mil plate boat, it's pretty pretty thick a little bit of pitting like this isn't um, really you know isn't really going to do much yeah. seems like a never-ending task but it's getting closer uh, we'll get some some rails along these these sides here we get some rails along there to put some fishing rods on maybe a, a canopy or something so that you know we'll go out with mates and that uh, um, when I get rained on, you know, there's only a little area under here with a you've got a bit of bit of roof over that little area. But uh, you know, if you're out here, you'll get sunburnt, so it might be nice to have a bit of a canopy. All right, so uh, now I think it might be time to go down and get a coffee. Get Cheers, liquid gold. Ah, oh, it's good stuff. <clears throat>